catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com. My name is Buki, your host as usual. Welcome to Cruise Control on Africa Tech Radio. We are Africa's number one technology radio reporting on technological advancements one broadcast at a time. It's Tuesday and of course I want to say congratulations to all Nigerians. There's a new... They call it sheriff in town, right? Yeah, but I don't think so. There's a new president in the country. Yay. Congratulations to the incumbents, right? Incumbent president Bola Tunumbu for Nigerians. Yes. <laughs> the election happened in February and of course, the inauguration happened yesterday, the 29th of May. And of course, on June 12th, is going to officially take position or take his seat yes that's what's happening over here in nigeria and of course looking at some other tech updates from this hour up till the next round of the clock so i get to sit with you for an hour plus just talking about all the tech updates and of course what's happening and what's hot what's new what's really going on i get to share all of this with you so stick around guys and of course, it's still cruise control where we're just um, going through all the stories. I could see in Guinea, the government actually ordered a two-day shutdown of the internet. And this is as a result of the anti-government protests going on in Guinea. And of course, uh, there's more news from where that came from as the future of B2B e-commerce in Africa is looking good. And investors are also looking at africa with you know side eye so the b2b e-commerce wasako is growing in its operation in kenya and in africa generally and most recently south africa so uh, we'll be looking at that story also while we look at what the air tech situation is all about people are kind of saying i don't want to say it directly but ai is going to take over ed tech Meaning that uh, the ways of teaching students would be a bit different from how it's been done in the past. And all this is thanks to artificial intelligence. And meanwhile, in Kenya, EdTech platform, CD actually got a pre-seed money to change the way employee training is done. This and many more that I'll be going through. But first, let me tell you my pain point of the day. <laughs> it's actually part of the tech update I have for you. Is the I feel with this one, we're quite familiar with the uh, news around password sharing from Netflix. A couple of months ago, they released a press statement saying that they would be clamping down on password sharing, meaning that you can no longer add up to four people using the same password and uh, not paying yes so they've come to clamp down on that graciousness of the original user giving other people the access and password to their account so right now the clamping has been going on and it's happened so the crackdown on this password sharing has already taken place It's been implemented in Canada, New Zealand, Portugal, and Spain. And right now, it's officially beginning in the U.S., so the United States. The video streaming company on Tuesday said it is now sending out emails to all U.S. subscribers who share passwords with people outside their household as part of a long-planned move to limit password sharing. Uh, How many people were sharing password before? I think up to, you can have up to four people and they don't belong in the same household. They could be far away. You could be sharing. I remember a friend of mine gave me password of someone outside Nigeria. Yes, from the US. And I was using the account. So that's, is not happening anymore for me. Uh, It has even changed last month. I remember complaining. I wanted to watch a movie and I found out I was logged out already from the account. And there was nothing I could do than go over to my own account and pay as it's supposed to. So I paid and then I was back on to watch the movie I wanted to watch. So right now, if you don't have a password, don't be dismayed that ah, you're not sharing your password with me. You're not stingy. They to themselves, they're not stingy because it's a money-making business and they need to make money. 
to have other people join or share this um account with you you have to pay extra fee for extra person that you're going to be sharing your password with and people are complaining that this fee has just been rising and rising and rising uh so only premium members can add two additional users outside of a household that would cost like 19.99 dollars per month for the base subscription and roughly another 12 dollar per month for two additional users that would be a total of 31.99 percent per month that means you're roughly paying 32 dollar per month you're going to have like other extra users aside the two users you are permitted to to add who must be from your household so if you're using people who are not from your household you're definitely going to be paying extra so other people are asking if it's possible to bypass the netflix region block and uh record having that you can actually use a vpn which is a virtual private network uh, it's going to tunnel your internet traffic through an intermediary server located in a country of your choice. Remember when Twitter cracked down on Nigerians and we were blocked out? It was a government instruction and we were blocked out of using Twitter. And everybody had to go through the route of using v- VPN. I think this is the stylishly saying it could work, but it's not being uh, satisfied. But so far, so good. Netflix does not permit people to share password anymore because they have to make money yeah this film production cost a lot so i do understand and all the way to guinea 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 the suppression of protests by the government ordered that the internet be taken down for two days and this has aggravated the protesters now they are protesting more and no one seems to back down so on May 17, 2023, the interim government of Guinea ordered a fresh internet shutdown ahead of the anti-government protest. And this move to shut down the internet was to discourage the planned demonstration and make it difficult for citizens to share information on social media platform. That's what report has. I don't know, this system of wanting to suppress protesters. I feel like every citizen has a right and a voice to call out the government when they are not getting good service good leadership i don't know why you would want to actually suppress the voice of the protesters you don't want them to communicate and gather together i mean one person can have a voice but the nation having a voice is no longer a voice it's a vibration they want change they want things to be different they want they demand what they should be given what they should be served I don't feel like it's a good thing to actually make that move. So this is actually not the first time that Guinea has experienced the internet shutdown. A situation like this happened in 2020, where the government restricted access to the internet twice, in March and also in October. When this happened, that's uh, the two internet shutdown period. They were met with widespread criticism from the human rights group. And right now, the United Nations Human Rights Office of the High Commissioner has condemned the Guinea government internet shutdown that just recently happened and um, a serious violation of the right to freedom of expression. Like I said, why would you want to suppress their voice? These are the same people who voted. We came together and said, oh, you could actually lead them, right? You could actually come into position and change a whole lot of things for you. The Guinean government internet shutdown is just a clear violation of human rights and threat to the economy and public health. That's what they are saying. And the international community must condemn this shutdown and call on the Guinea government to restore internet access. I mean, I used to tell you guys, a lot happened with internet. Internet has changed our world. A whole lot of things that we do now in the past used to be like a long procedure, a long process, a long going up and coming down, traveling long, long distance to just get the message delivered. I mean, a whole lot of things I, I cannot attribute enough. Even businesses, they use the internet to push their businesses. People can now trade from one country to another. Unlike in the past, you just have to import these things and sell to people in your neighborhood or in your environment. Right now, you can be in Lagos and be selling to someone in LA 
be transacting with someone in Ireland and you could connect with people all thanks to the internet. Then imagine the internet being shut down for two whole day. That's 48 hours. You know how much millions people would have lost money. The frustration just that you cannot even connect for an hour can be so frustrating. So I'm not in support of this at all. I'm not, I'm not in support of this. I'm, so I'm not supposed to take a stand, but I know the power of the internet. Because without the internet, how would you hear my voice? How would you listen to this um, episode or this recording or this uh, live streaming that we have? You need the internet. So the internet is too powerful at this point. For the government to be playing with. I don't think the internet is actually a human right. So I do agree that the, 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 they condemn this action. That's my own point of view today. Yeah. And of course, it's time to talk AI and of course, uh, education. Edutech is something we don't really, really talk about that much because we're just saturating the whole news with fintech, 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 and of course, some social apps that just doing their thing so they decided to look into the educational sector what's really going on what's the development happening and i came across this um, article on the role of ai in the future of edtech in africa edtech is actually education technology so it's called edtech yes so i mean when you look at artificial intelligence a lot of things have happened in just a short amount of time that's to tell you that things are moving rapidly 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 so artificial intelligence is rapidly changing the world and education is of course no exception when we look at africa we see that the quality of education is uh, quite measurable and it's low it's kind of limited the people who have access to uh, quality education are people upper in upper class and people middle and below are just uh, struggling to get themselves through schools and even the syllabus and curriculum are kind of uh, questionable so ai is now coming to save the day ai has the potential to revolutionize learning and make it more accessible to everyone so how are they doing this they are creating a system where each student can get a personalized learning experience. I mean, AI can actually help them just like the chatbot system is going to help them with answering questions. So the student can actually pose the question out the way they feel the question in their head and get a quick and good response from the AI. And you know, with teachers, if you ask too many questions, you might just be told to shut up or keep quiet or feel kind of uncomfortable being the only one answering or asking so many questions in a class. So with the chatbot system, you can ask as many questions as possible. I mean, as, this would have been so nice for me growing up because I'm that kind of uh, student that would always... Oh, this was in my secondary school and primary school. Because in university, I just kind of chilled and went to back of the classroom. Yeah, so I used to be that student that always liked to ask questions, even if it's ridiculous. I remember so many... I can really hear their echoes in my head. They always laugh at me. And sometimes the, the teachers have to like kind of take a pause to think about the question because probably they were not looking at it from that angle. And that's why I love the classroom. I love question and answering segment of any, even in this moment, if I, had, if I go to maybe an event, which I attended one on Friday and there was question and answering segment there. And I really enjoyed it because some things we kind of have to look at it from other people's perspective. You might think yours is really, really clear. Wait till we hear about the question from another angle that you were probably not looking at. So in addition to having personalized learning, AI can also be used to improve efficiency and effectiveness of education. I mean, for example, if you automate tasks such as grading papers, creating lesson plans, freeing up teachers, this is going to help teachers to focus more on important things like providing individualized attention to students. I feel like attention to students is quite important because if you're taking how they will go through, I'm just going to use a public school, for example, they have over 100 students in a class and a teacher, one single teacher had to mark the old papers of their students. They get very exhausted, fatigued, and they still have to prepare for the next day or the next week or the next term and everything. 
so they reduce this so they can pay attention to students who need extra care or attention to help them understand the their studies properly ai can also be used to address some of the challenges that are unique to education such as getting education in local languages i know sometimes like i said i'm a yoruba girl there are certain things i can express in my local language i can express it perfectly but once you ask me to start expressing it in english um I would not really want to express or ask the questions. I would not really want to speak on certain subject because I'm going to be speaking in another language, entirely borrowed language. But if you ask me to talk about that thing in my mother language, I'm definitely going to go deep, 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 deep. But once I had to use English language, I'm just going to be... I'm not saying I'm always surface level and shallow on my show. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that AI can also help to provide educational content in local languages, which can help to close the language gap and make education more accessible to students who speak minority language. And that's one beauty of African countries. We love, love our mother tongue so much. South Africans are like the Gs. No matter how good their English is, they will still put their South African... I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry pardon me. I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm sorry. So overall, AI has the potential to make a significant positive impact on education. Yes, that's my bone of contention with this conversation because right now if you look around africa in south africa they have the m tabe ed check startup that uses ai to provide personalized learning to students in tanzania and they help to generate this content that is tailored to each student's individual needs and over in kenya we also have the m shule which is also an edtech that uses AI to provide educational content and keep track of each student's progress, identify areas that they need additional support and provide them with personalized learning resources. And in and in Nigeria, we also have edtech uh, company that is the Get Bondi was launched in Lagos and targets STEM skills for young Africans. They are situated in Lagos, which of course Lagos is the location where they debut the Get Bondi, an educational platform that makes it simpler for young Africans to gain high standard educational access. And they are providing education for people in the STEM fields, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yes, and of course, in Kenya, we also have the ZD. They recently got pre-seed money to change the way employee training is done. That means they're training people and they're offering digital soft skill and technical skill classes. So all this is just to improve on the educational sector and, of course, utilize technology in, in the educational sector, like I said make everything simpler and also individually focus that's the part i love the most where every individual can actually get a learning process that is uh, focused on them you know generally when you're in a classroom you just go with the bandwagon but right now if you don't understand it, you can sit down and work through it with artificial intelligence yes that's that on education and joining in the open banking revolution is south africa yay they finally cash on to the open banking system where you all transaction or documentation goes through a particular channel so this has actually been something that also nigerians newly joined i mean a few months ago right yeah, so now we also have the South Africans joining into the open banking system. The main goal of open banking is to give people more power by giving them more control over their financial information and access to more financial services. It also wants to make the financial market more open and competitive so customers can easily use the wide range of products and services. And also when you look at the interest rate, it's kind of going up and inflation is also rising as fast as it gets harder for customers and lenders to get what they need. So the open banking system 
is going to help mitigate the risk assessment to keep up with the loan demand. So right now, South African has gotten their permission-based uh, data sharing, which makes it easier to evaluate and verify the information. So the open banking is basically going to allow financial institutions and third-party providers to share data safely. So this removes the need of manual documentation, which also saves time. I mean, when you look at the idea of the open bank, it started in the UK in 2018. And since then, most countries are adopting to this uh, open banking system. And South Africa has also taken a look into it and decided that this is the system they want to operate on. That means they will have automated solutions to meet the permission-based sharing models and comparable to other principles which provide uh, opportunity to obtain authentic supporting documents. I feel like this system is good. At least things are going to be measured and they will follow through a particular coming from one particular house. I don't know why I'm using house, maybe because of Netflix. So uh, before it goes out to third party, you know it's coming from a particular place so yeah south africa welcome on board the country also has a strong legal system and strict requirements for compliance and modern technology infrastructure which also makes it good for the open banking to to work so it's actually good because companies banks and customers get to work together and fully accept this system of operation South Africa also has some rules in place as well as a lot of information and technology that can help this to work favorably. And all that is left for business is for everyone to come together as a group and support open banking for its ability to increase transparency, make business process easier and give co consumers more choices. So it's a win-win for everybody when you look at it. Yes. Let's look at the future of B2B e-commerce in Africa. Because when you look at the landscape generally in Africa, you would notice that we are so green and a lot of good things could happen. Yes, we still have space for growth, a whole lot of space. And people are actually looking at e-commerce in Africa. It's just expanding and there's so much more that could still be done. So B2B e-commerce startups are springing up here and there and of course we talked about business models some time ago on the show and i also attended events organized by people capacity management they turned five in their fifth anniversary they decided to launch the africa entrepreneur 1.0 so it's the tech africa entrepreneur 1.0 it happened on friday and I was live at the event, get to speak to some stakeholders and some people who are at the forefront of the Africa technological space, looking at VCs, looking at getting funded, talking about business, business model and all the likes of it. Whether you like it or not, your business model has got to change. People operating in the old traditional way have to adopt the new system of doing things, which is using technology to advance their businesses. If not, you just be left behind and don't know what's happening. So companies are using all manner of features just to ensure that they have a tap and a hang of technology for advancement of their business. And B2B e-commerce in uh, Africa is also expanding so fast. And several factors are necessary to make this a success. Uh, looking at the management team and, of course, the innovative business model and focus on customer service. So there are companies who are actually providing all of this growing demand in the e-commerce in Africa. The future of B2B e-commerce in Africa is bright, like I said. And considering that we have a lot of large middle class family and the growing demand for online shopping. People are moving their business now to online. That's why I mentioned earlier that, I mean, shutting down the internet for two days is going to cripple a whole lot of stuff. I'm not in support of it. If you look at uh, B2B e-commerce companies operating in Africa, 
you will see that there are companies that are fully funded and experienced. There are others who are still seeking fund. So Dream VC is like a program that help African investment talent record. They've set a new record for prospective entrepreneurs from all over the continent who applied. So with over 4,000 applications in three court cycle, Dream VC is changing the African venture market and exciting investors and entrepreneurs. I mean, who is not going to be excited? So since the program aims to increase and attract more and more people each year, and Dream VC got over thousands of applications, which shows that the program is off to a good start. And surprisingly, they had just um, 67% of the applicants being men and 33 were women. And also they aim to promote diversity and inclusion in their program, solving the gender imba- imbalance in the investment world. I mean, a lot is happening right now, so you need fund to get things started off the ground. And wishing everybody who applied luck, hopefully their business idea gets the interest of the investors. And let's change Africa one startup at a time. This is where I'm going to draw the curtain on today's show. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sitting through the show with me. I definitely had an amazing time just looking at the stories. I'm always very optimistic on the show because when I read this story, I I just dream of new Africa and I see everything getting automated, things becoming very simpler and having to explain things to our parents, like to my mom, and she's and I see all the excitement when she can actually do the things on us on her own. And it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I love to see a new Africa every day, a new Nigeria every day. I want to see a new world around me, basically. And that's that. For that, I'll be bouncing out of the studio. Thank you for sticking with me. This is Cruise Control, and my name is Buki, your host as usual, till I don't know when. I'm still your host for now. (laughs) So if if you're driving, do drive safe. And of course, Take good care of your mental health and stay sane. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to catch up on all the live shows right here on africatechradio.com.